welcome everybody. We've got a little combination of folks that are going to be new to Talma, hopefully this summer and hopefully also to the full year. We have some of our current full year participants. And then uh, I don't know if it's for everybody that it's the top left corner, but um, we're joined by Alone Fluderman, who is our CEO of Talma, uh, Rachel Morrison, who's one of the recruitment directors. Um, I think it's Actually, these are all three of the people I interviewed. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. So um, it's like, then, I know them. <laughs> <laughs> for our new folks, um, Tequila, who's uh, showing as the Kafar, Judith Galtz, um, Stacy, uh, are all full year participants currently in Mitz Bay Ramon on our full year program. And so they're here to be able to offer you some insights on what the experience is like from on the ground. Um, and we're here to kind of give you a bigger overview about what this opportunity could look like should you decide to stay on beyond the summer with us uh, and, and join us for a full year experience in Israel. So with that, I'm gonna pass it off to Alone to introduce himself and maybe share a few words. And I know just for some context alone, uh, Judith, Tahila, and Stacy have to drop off shortly. So maybe uh, we can get their insights early on. Not a problem. So hi everyone, thank you for joining us today. Um, I'd like to say a few words about who we are, what it is we do, what to expect with the program you have already applied for, as opposed to the program that you are expressing your interest in and have yet to apply for. Uh, so Talma started off about four and a half years ago as a program that had allowed elementary schools to stay open during the summer, uh, during the month of July, and basically creating that 11th month of public education, which is like a new concept in Israel. In Israel, there's only uh, public schools. We don't have any private schools. So going into low-income communities and working with the school system means that you work with all the schools, not just with part of the schools. And part of the challenge there was also to provide a good education to all the different affiliated groups within Israeli society. Because once there's only public education, everyone is entitled to receive education based on the way they lead their own personal lives. So the uh, Arab community gets to receive public Muslim education. The Jewish community gets to receive public Jewish education. The extra, I uh, mean, the, the uh, ultra-Orthodox get to uh, receive public ultra-Orthodox education and, and so on and so forth. And our mission as educators is to make sure that everybody gets that same public service at a high level, raising the bar high is part of something that we really believe in, especially when it's challenging. And we, we come in focusing on that one specific core subject, with, which is in English. Um, many times when I lecture in different places, I talk about the fact that every educational system around the world has two goals. One is to prepare children for life in the country that they're living in, and the second is to prepare children for life, or basically for competing in the global market. So it's kind of obvious that by uh, focusing on core subjects such as English, math, science, etc., you're preparing children to compete in the global market. And we want to make sure that all children have the opportunity, opportunity to advance regardless of where they live, what their financial background is like, what kind of uh, uh, religion they pursue or how they practice that religion. It, it doesn't really matter to us. Uh, so Talma has really become something very special uh, we'll have many opportunities to talk to you about what that summer program has developed into from two towns to 15 towns, from 35 classes to 150 classes. It's really it, very, very special. And we're excited that you're joining our course this summer. Uh, we have set the goal to create three experiences that are also relevant for the full year program. So I'm just going to say something about that. Uh, when I talk about Tama, I talk about three experiences that we bring within that public service that I've just mentioned. An experience for the children in the program, an experience for the Israeli local teachers on the program, and an experience for the non-Israeli teachers on the program. So the children in the program get an opportunity to advance, as mentioned, regardless of their backgrounds. Uh, a normal educational system for school or child, rather, gets about two to three weekly hours of English. Stacy teaches at a school in Mitzpe where kids get about two weekly hours of English. And during the summer program, they get five hours a day. Uh, usually there's one teacher in the classroom, and then during Talmud, there are two teachers in the classroom. We have one Israeli and one non-Israeli, and, and so on and so forth. And we do this inside the same classrooms 
that the kids learn in throughout the whole year. So we're sending out that message that school can be something more than just a place for homework and exams. Uh, the second experience is for the Israeli teachers who are saying that they are experiencing co-teaching for the first time in their lives, that they are taking back with them many more things besides uh, the experience of working for an additional month and that additional salary that we pay them, meaning that they're learning how to uh, use new class, classroom management methods, uh, different ways for preparing lessons, for delivering lessons, and these are skills and techniques that are important for professionals in the field of education uh, after the school vacation as well. So after the summer vacation as well. So we found we find that Talma has become relevant to teachers uh, after the summer and not just during the summer. Last and not least, all of our teachers that apply from outside of Israel are, are teachers that are have hopefully been to Israel before. It's not a touristy program. The expectation is that you don't come to this program as people who are just interested in visiting, you know, Masada, the Dead Sea, and the Western Wall, but you're coming to Israel in order to connect to the people and go into low-income communities and believe in that specific service, especially while being part of something bigger. We've had, last year we had over a thousand teachers that have applied and we chose the top 100, so we have that ability to choose the people that we think that are committed to the same set of values and are interested in leading change and helping us bring that vision that I've just described into life. Uh, the main difference between the summer program and the full year program is that the summer program is very, very structured. Okay? Around May, uh, we will be meeting regionally and I will be able to present to you at least a month and a half in advance what you're going to be doing every day. Okay, when are the, the free afternoons as opposed to the program afternoons? And when are the free weekends as opposed to the program weekends? We have five different learning levels. Judith and Teila are on our pedagogy team and uh, curriculum design and, and teacher training team. Uh, so it's, it's nice to see that you know, our teachers are putting together lesson plans that are then taught by all the different teachers. And it's just part of the things that we are able to offer in advance to teachers who want to use those materials so they never have to you know, think of anything from scratch. So summer is very structured. However, the full year program is not as structured. And I'll say a few sentences about why we've started this full year program and who we're actually looking for. Um, in Israel, we have a lack of just about 600 English teachers, okay, which is crazy. It means that in many of the areas, especially the areas that are distant from the center of the country, or the low income areas rather, um, there is, there are not enough teachers in order to give children the minimum that they are entitled to receive based on the public education bill okay, that has been passed when this, the country was established. So it's not because there are no jobs to offer and it's not because there's no money, it's because there's a lack of professionals. And what we've done is hopefully, I mean, this is what we're trying to do and hopefully succeeding bring to life the motto of equal opportunities in education. It's not just a motto that we, we throw around easily, but rather something that we're trying to pursue thanks to committed educators that we have on the pilot program that we're doing right now. We have about 15 American teachers uh, on, the full, on the first full year program that is now happening currently in Mitzpe, Mitzpe Ramon, uh, the south of Israel, south of Be'er Sheva by beautiful craters. Um, a distant place on the one hand, a challenging place on the one hand. On the other hand, it's a safe place. It's important to say that the areas that we go to are uh, challenging economically, but they're not dangerous in any way. It's safe to walk there at night, and there are many interesting projects going, so there, there's like a, a lot of opportunities there uh, on that specific turf to, to attract young professionals, especially in the field of education, but not just and creates some special community lifestyle. Um, and our teachers who are living there are traveling between four different communities. We are working with Dimona, Yerucham, Mitzbe, the town where they're living, and another municipality called Lamak Negev. And the idea is that every teacher uh, in the program has at least one school that they work with throughout the year as the English teacher. Now, uh, I'll just say what that week looks like, and then I'll ask some of the participants who are here with us to share their insights and experiences, and then we'll, we'll go back to the discussion and, and take further questions. But we only work with certified teachers. We are not recruiting people who haven't been on the summer program for the full year program. 
we want the people applying for the full year program to get to know us first. So because we're, we have a group here of people who have yet to be on the summer program but are interested, we're starting to have a conversation about both. So if this is something that you would, look, that you would like to look deep into, we would be able to continue that conversation even though you haven't been on the summer program yet, but because or thanks to the fact that you're going to be in just a few months' time. So every teacher and people have different levels of, of Hebrew and you'll see over the summer program you don't have to speak Hebrew at all in order to teach English, especially not in our summer program. Uh, but people have different Hebrew uh, levels when it comes to communication skills, reading and writing skills. So even if you don't speak Hebrew at all, this is a program that is relevant to you. And uh, we offer each principal to put together uh, a work plan, a weekly work plan that has three different possible uh, methodologies. Okay? One would be leading a class on your own if you feel comfortable doing that, being that teacher that the school is lacking. The other option would be dividing up a class into two, so you'd be working with 50% of the kids at a time. And the third option would be doing pullouts, okay? working with either small groups up to five kids at a time. If they are weak, help them bridge those gaps. And if they are strong, push them forwards, which no one usually does. Um, and then based on the grades that you teach, you, you talk to your principal and figure out what your schedule would look like. So you're not expected to stand up in front of a class on your own all the time by yourself if this is not something that you're comfortable with, but you would be a professional coming on to a, t to a team uh, that is waiting for you, that needs you, and you'd be doing it with a group of people that are committed to the same set of values as mentioned. So our job is to basically create a, a certain framework and then choose the right people that could bring um, content to that framework and create good lives for themselves, the, the members of their community, and the students that they're working with. So that would be like my opening speech. So maybe we can have, I know you guys have to drop shortly, but Stacy, Tahila, um, Judith, if you guys maybe could give just a few quick words on uh, what have been the highlights and maybe challenges of being a part of a program like this, especially in the first year of it? Um, and any words of wisdom for folks that might be interested in joining? I'll go, waiting for me. Um, I am teaching in Demona. I'm at a religious school that in the past has had very, very, very low English levels. Like the principal speaks some English, but outside of that, most of the staff, they don't, they don't speak English at all. Um, and one of the highlights for me is them seeing the progress that especially the youngest grades are making and them seeing um, the way in which I teach English. What I've noticed in, this, in the school is that language instruction tends to be very traditional. So they teach like grammar stuff. Today we're learning present progressive and you know teach that way. And so the kids might be able to recognize um, how to, write a certain sentence but they don't really learn any speaking skills um and then the way that we come in the classroom and sort of change it around and we emphasize speaking and we do group work and we move the kids around we do a lot of things that are not traditionally seen in the classroom and the teachers and the principal like everybody has been really really receptive to it um and even the kids like when they you know see me they'll say teacher or good job or whatever just random things that they just want to say because they want to say it in english um, so for me, that's been a highlight, just seeing like the shift, um, both in the proficiency and, and with the staff recognizing that like things are, are changing and this program is actually having a positive impact um, in the school. Um, what else did you ask? Emily? Words of wisdom or insights about being in Mitzvah? Um, I think, and we talked about this with the last one, sometimes this summer can be challenging because it's summertime like kids may have different expectations about what the program is they may be expecting a summer camp whatever but like don't let that distract you or if you have a bad day like don't let it take over everything just brush it off um and and start over if something is not working in the middle of your lesson don't like write it out and continue to be miserable let it go and try something else um 
And it may have to be things that are not traditional. You might be used to kids sitting in rows and, and being quiet and not moving. It's not going to happen. 99% of the time probably won't happen. But then you just use that to your advantage. If you have kids who won't sit down, you plan activities where they can get up. If you have kids who they like to bounce around, they're very competitive, then you plan a lot of competitive activities. Um, so it's really just about making the kids' personalities and the chaos and everything that's going on around you work to your advantage. Um, and so for me, my summer was really, really challenging. Um, but I found that a lot of that has to do with the fact that it's summertime and like, we, we don't want to sit and learn in the summertime. Like it's just sort of naturally happens. Um, but my full year experience, I mean, the kids, they still don't sit down. They, they still are not quiet, but you just, they're learning a lot because I use that to my advantage. Um, and so just don't, if you're used to doing things a certain way and it's not working, stop doing it that way. Find another way to do it, even if you're not 100% comfortable with it, even if it's not something that you're used to doing or even something that you wouldn't want to do in your own classroom. If it's working for your kids, if it's helping them learn, then that's what you should be doing. And that's it. Thanks, Tahila. So I have to go, um, but you guys enjoy. and. If you have questions either about the summer or the full year program or whatever, you're welcome to contact me, um, Deborah and Rachel, and alone I'll have my information. Okay. Bye. Stacy? We can't hear you. You're on mute, Stacy. Can you hear me now? Ken? Okay. <laughs> um, so I am in a unique situation. I'm in two schools right now, one in Demona and one in Mids Bay. So I'm two days a week in one school and two days in another. Um, so I am often pulling small groups of either high language English speakers or low, depending on what the day is, what the need is um, depending on the week. So you need a lot of flexibility, a lot of um, ideas in your back pocket, um, bringing with you just to bring out at those moments when you're not sure what might work. Um, a lot of my experience has been in early childhood. So I have a lot of like games and activities that can be adapted for any grade. Um, and that work with a lot of the English topics. So having those always in my bag really comes in handy whichever school I happen to be in. Um, that's because of the challenge because I never know what might happen that day. But it, it gets more exciting um, as we build relationships with the teachers and become more familiar with the schools and figuring out where you fit in. Um, and yeah, and it's a really nice neighborhood. Mitz Bay is a lovely place. <laughs> um, and we're making a really good community and um, learning about the ins and outs of Mitz Bay itself. So it's nice that we're building this little town. It'd be even better. If you have any questions, you can also email me, but I have to go. Thank you. Thank you. Love you guys. Local Meets Bay, Tama Town, by the way. <laughs> Tama Town. Meets Bay, freaking Ramon. <laughs> Europe. And for Jocelyn, I think you just joined us. We're just hearing from some of the current full year participants, and then we're going to uh, zoom out and we'll talk more about the, the general program after this. But the full year people are here for just a few minutes. So go for it, Judith. Okay. I don't have to leave. I'm just working on grades. So if you want to, do you want me to talk now or later? It's up to you. Go ahead. Talk now. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, so I'm Judith. You're going to be seeing a lot of me moving forward too, because I'm also on the curriculum and pedagogy team for the summer program. Um, so I guess both Tahila and Stacy talked a lot about what the schools are like. So maybe I should talk about Mitzvah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Myth Bay, if you haven't already looked it up on Google Maps, you should just to get an idea of where you're going to be. Uh, but though next year there might be possibilities of expanding. But Myth Bay is uh, 
really super small town. Uh, I think 5,000 people live here in the desert. Um, it's about an hour and 15 minutes or so from the next major city, which is Beersheba. Um, there are a lot of Ibex. And also, if you don't know what Ibex are, I suggest you look them up and they will never get old no matter what the Israelis tell you. They're really cool. Um, and so for, I think a lot of people on the program, they've had to adjust to small town living, um, coming from larger cities like New York or Chicago. Um, I'm from Philadelphia, but I'm having no problem adjusting to Mitz Bay personally. I love it here. I appreciate the quiet. Um, and Mitz Bay is a really, for a small town, it's pretty diverse. Um, there are a lot of really uh, interesting people who live here and it creates this really interesting community. Um, there are religious communities here. They're non-religious. There's kind of like this hippie desert vibe going on in some parts of Mitz Bay. Um, there are a lot of really active young adults. There's a young adults program and we're working with them to do some volunteer projects. Um, and so even though it's a small town, I feel like I've never run out of things to explore and things to do. Um, there's a jazz club and um, a, an area of the town called the Hangarim. They're old airplane hangars that were turned into like shops and restaurants and bars and clubs and things like that, um, which are very active. There are plenty of restaurants, um, a lot of really cool opportunities to explore the outdoors. I mean, we are living on the largest Maktesh, which is a specific type of crater in the world. Um, and so lots of cool hiking and stargazing and ATV riding, right, Deb, Rachel? <laughs> um, so, I mean, I, you know, even though it's a small town sort of in the remote area of, of Israel, I, I love it. And I mean, it's Israel. It's cool. So. Thank you, Judith. And uh, Rachel made a good point that before we dive maybe into kind of the slideshow and overview of what the program is, we have such a small group of you guys that are uh, potentially new to the program. And I know Rachel has had a chance to speak to um, you all, but maybe if we can just kind of go through and if you can just sort of share your name, where you are, and kind of uh, maybe where you're at in the thought of potentially spending a year next year in Israel and with us. So maybe can we start with you, Talia? Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I've never used Zoom before, so I'm like trying new things. Um, my name's Talia. I currently live in Kansas City. Um, I'm originally from Denver, Colorado. Um, I have spent actually like a strange amount of time in the Negev. I um, went to school for a short period of time in high school in Stay Boker. Um, so I've like I'm kind of familiar with the general area. Um, and I think I am like considering the year program. Um, before I joined Teach for America, I started off teaching in um, Madagascar and Uganda, um, first with just a sh small school um, and then in the Peace Corps. So um, I'm familiar with kind of being the foreigner in the classroom. Um, and it's something that I've enjoyed and that's kind of why I'm taking that approach and that look into considering Tama for the full year. Is that all? Okay. Yeah. Shana? Um, can you hear me? Okay, um, so my name is Shana. I am currently in Baltimore, Maryland, um, but I'm originally from a small town in New Jersey. Um, I am interested in Tama for the full year um, because I well, this summer with um, Reality Revolve, where I met Talia, it was my first um, time in Israel, and I very much enjoyed that, but I would very much like to explore sort of like the non-touristy, off-the-beat aspects of the country and the people, um, and this is something that like I got to study abroad for a year in college. I was in the UK and Russia and doing, being in both of those countries for like such an extended period of time really allowed me to like get to know the like actual countries as opposed to like what you would do if you're there for like a week on like a trip. Um, so it's definitely something that I'm like really interested in and I think it could be a really great way to get to know like more of the real Israel. Did I answer Yeah, no, that's great. Um, Virginia? 
Can you guys hear me? We're good. We're good. Yeah. Um, okay, so my name is Virginia. I'm currently in a very tiny town, probably smaller than Mitzvah. I teach in Fluvanna County, Virginia, which is in central Virginia, close to about 40 minutes away from Charlottesville, um, which is where I live. I teach Spanish right now. Um, I'm interested in the full year in Israel because, I mean, I've been to Israel uh, twice for both like three and four weeks. I just got back from there last week, actually. Um, and I've never lived abroad before and teaching English is my passion and I want to teach English abroad in other countries. And there's no better place for me to explore that and really get my feet wet with the whole teaching English thing than in Israel because you're only dealing with different language backgrounds, you're dealing with different cultural backgrounds, which is really what the main part of teaching English as a foreign language is. So um, Tama seems like a wonderful organization to explore that with. Fantastic, thank you. Jocelyn, are you able to find that? <laughs> yeah, um, let me see. I just press the, 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 start, the start video button <laughs> on the bottom. Oh, okay. I also have never used Zoom before. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Um, everyone can hear me? <laughs> so I'm Jocelyn. This is Tito. Um, I guess, so I, I've been teaching ESL for the past, um, like, five years now, I think. I started, I taught for two years in Madrid after college. And then I've been teaching ESL in Chicago since then. Um, the part that I was most drawn to about the Talma program is that it's for teachers. I feel like a lot of the programs I've seen for teaching abroad are more like, or at least the one I did, you didn't have to be a teacher, you just had to know English. So I liked that the requirements for this one seemed more strict about, you know, you have to have your teaching license, this needs to be your profession. So I feel like that's means that I could grow as a teacher, like professionally doing the program. It wouldn't just be a break for me, like to go travel, even though of course that is a perk, like traveling is probably why a lot of people get into ESL in the first place. Um, I've been to Israel once before and I loved it. I went on a birthright trip. Um, the birthright trip itself, I w I, it was cool because we got to see a lot. I wasn't crazy about um, my program itself but I stayed for I think three weeks afterwards by myself just to travel and meet people and see it through my own eyes which I really really enjoyed so I think that's pretty much that's pretty much it terrific and then Rachel I think you just joined us a little bit late but we would love to just hear um, a little bit about who you are and uh, where you're at in the process of thinking about potentially joining us for a full year And you might, you're not on mute, but I'm not sure if you can hear us. Can you hear us, Rachel? Rachel Feller. Going once, twice. Okay. So if you want to chime in, feel free at any point. But um, what we can maybe do alone, I don't know if uh, I'm going to try to request to share my screen. And Rachel and I have just like a little slideshow that um, we can kind of talk over some points about. Uh, Mitzvah Ramon and the full year program in Israel, but we also want to open it up to you all if you have questions. So please like pause us, stop us if there are things that, uh, you know, we're not answering that you're wanting to know or that would be helpful. Feel free to chime in like before we start if there's something that we can kind of offer context or as we're going along, um, just jump in as well. So let me do this. Can you all see that? Okay, awesome. Um, so Rachel and I can tag team this. I'm going to skip past some of it, but I'll pause for a second just to show a couple of uh, some of the findings from our, our summer program. There is an organization called RAMA that essentially uh, is an outside organization that comes in to evaluate programs and their effectiveness and uh, what participants feel. And we've been very fortunate to have incredibly good results uh, coming out of the program, which is a big reason why we felt excited to uh, go from just being a summer program this uh, over the last couple of years to expanding into a full year program. 
if we've been able to make an incredible impact in you know, the short months of the summer, what can we do with a longer amount of time? And so just kind of quickly highlighting a few of those, 98% um, of the Israeli teachers who our teachers work with over the summer have felt that our program coming in is actually improving English during the regular school year. So now if we can join during the regular school year as well, um, there's really a huge possibility for major impact. Um, it's a professional development. And so this is also a matter of like how people are perceiving the experience for themselves and what it means when they go back to their regular classrooms. And so just I'll pause on the numbers for a second. Um, but 93% of the Israeli teachers were wanting to continue with Tama in the future. They are in some cases joining us in the full year program as well. So there's a group of Israeli teachers and then there's a group of the American or international teachers. Um, and so I will skip past that, but all of these numbers are available to you guys if you are interested. But the main thing is that Rama found that we are reaching our goals as a program, that we're building confidence for students in their English language, that we're making them feel more capable about it, and that we're also giving the local teachers and schools insights into ways that they can be more effective as well once we leave the community. So with that, a look ahead into the future of Tama. I'm going to skip over some of the things, but potentially in just eight months, you could find yourself in Mitzbay Ramon. And for those who have not been or have not seen it, that background is essentially the Maktesh that Judith mentioned earlier. It is a giant crater. Um, it is spectacular and beautiful for sunrises and sunsets as Rachel and I have found. Um, but there's also an incredible opportunity with Thomas full year program being there. So maybe Rachel, um, you can share a little bit about some of the social expectations. Sure. Um, I, it's hard because I can't scroll on your screen, <laughs> so I don't oh, know what's coming no, next. Fine, but I think that's it's just it's just that. Oh, okay. Um, so socially, um, you know, you're going to be living. I think Alone touched on it just a little bit. Um, you'll be living in an apartment in you know in the community, and these are a little bit different than what you'll experience in the summer program. In the summer program, you have a roommate and you know you're sharing a room you're sharing a bathroom um but in the full year program you know you're living in a real apartment you know what we're used to you have um your own bedroom you're gonna have a bathroom like there'll be like a living room kitchen you'll have the ability to cook um and you know we it was great because we just went and visited and we witnessed some amazing things that they were cooking actually um, you know, so you'll have the opportunity to make a nice Shabbat dinner. A lot of the people in the community will make Shabbat dinner. Um, but as far as like outside of the living situation as well, like Misa Ramon is a very small town, but there are a lot of opportunities, you know, to explore, whether that be if you like to explore the nature, um, there is a participant who loves to hike, like he's literally hiked all over the area. Um, you know, like Deborah was saying, the Maktesh is beautiful. So just going there and spending some time, um, and just, you know, looking at the sunrises, the sunsets, and all of the Ibex, which, like Judith said, they don't get old. I, like, they're, they made me laugh every single time I was walking, and they're around me. Um, and then there are a lot of different kind of locally owned businesses and things like that. Unfortunately, we didn't get to explore those. We came right on the weekend when things were starting to close, but we did get, find some nice restaurants, um, places to eat, um, you know, things to do. Um, and, and it's really what you make it. You know, if you are wanting to go ahead and go out into the community and kind of assimilate yourself and, um, you know, talk to anybody and everybody, like kind of Deborah and I like to do, um, it, there's definitely opportunities for you there. Okay, unmuted. Um, so I'll just add on one other thing that alone is always really good about pointing out with Mitz Bay. Um, this is kind of the place where pioneering initiatives take place. Um, it's a, a place where there's so much opportunity that if people do want to make a difference, it's a chance to really go and see immensely how you can make an impact um, because you're, you're starting with a very blank slate. So there's high tech companies and that are bringing their business to Mitzvah Ramon to infuse it with more young people and families moving to the area. Um, there are, uh, you know, startup businesses that are coming to the area. And so it's really kind of a place for social experiments and testing out businesses. And so uh, there's a jazz school that's in the area where people are coming from all over the world for three years. There's 
other young people besides the folks in our program that you have an opportunity uh, if you so choose to connect with. Um, and the other piece socially is that we offer you an opportunity and we'll speak more to this later, but we offer you an opportunity to take courses at Ben Gurion University of the Negev, which is a major school in Israel. Um, it is considered a big social scene within Israel. And for those that you know understand how the Israeli system works with folks going into the army, most of these people are closer to our age in terms of mid 20s, 30s, uh, when they do go to the university. And so when you have an opportunity to attend classes there, that's a chance for you to socialize as well and get involved in um, a scene outside of Mitzvah as well. Professionally, uh, Alone and, and Judith and some of the other full year teachers talked about this as well, but it can look very different school to school. So again, just to reiterate, and I'll kind of give a, a chance for y'all to ask questions about this aspect, but you could have you know, small group pullouts, you can do pushing, you could have your own classroom, you could be a co-teacher. Um, it really looks different case by case, and we do our best to try to connect you with an opportunity that you would feel most comfortable with. At the end of the day, the hope is that you'll take this, the opportunity presented to you and we'll provide the supports necessary to help you be successful in it. Um, so any questions so far? I'll pause and feel free to just chime in if anyone has thoughts. Okay, I'll keep going. If you have something, just chime in, feel free to interrupt. Um, for the personal growth experience. Rachel, you want to take it? We've kind of been touching on this a lot, but really the personal growth experience is really all in what you make it. Um, you know, we speak a lot about talking about being a pioneer and it's really kind of embodying what that actually means, you know, what being a pioneer actually means. And it's taking, you know, the challenges that come with a new program, um, you know, and finding a way to, I guess, like Alone said in the last one, like make lemonade with lemons and finding a way to make those challenges into something sweet. Um, you know, I always talk in the summer program for those that I've interviewed, um, and a lot of people will ask, like, what's the best part of the summer program? And I think it's, you know, arriving at a problem, and instead of trying to walk around the problem or, like, completely move the problem out of the way, it's finding out how to walk through the problem and come out a stronger person on the other side. And I think that that's um, definitely true and even more true for the full year program. And, and as, as far as personal growth goes, it's really up to you at, like as a person on how you want to grow. Like Tehila was saying, she, you know, she's really using this opportunity to improve her Hebrew and she wants to be, she is determined to be fluent, you know, by the end of the year. And then some people are also, you know, starting to train for half marathons and, you know, they're getting into like cooking healthy food or like things that they're interested in. Um, you know, on a personal level. And so it, it's it's really all in what you make it um, and all in how you go about meeting some of the challenges that come with it being a newer program, living in a different country, um, you know, just, just taking those and figuring out a way that you can turn them into something that helps you grow. And just to kind of add on to that, I mean, there's, when you're in your real life and day to day, you can oftentimes get consumed by your job and whatever uh, you know is happening in your family life or whatever it might be. And here's a chance to kind of step away from it for a year, slow down and really be able to focus on you and your personal health, both mental and physical and everything. And um, kind of if, if you choose to, um, it's an opportunity to kind of reinvent yourself or start fresh um, and, and do so in a new and exciting place. So, the next piece that we'll share is, unlike the summer program, which is a purely volunteer experience, we're obviously covering the accommodation and we cover um, your basic cost of living, but with the full year program, you actually have, beyond us just covering the basic cost, also um, an opportunity to get a stipend. So I'm gonna skip past some of these slides and just share that what we do is we offer um, essentially your accommodation a living stipend, which is 15,000 US dollars, keeping in mind that all of your basic expenses are covered. So transportation, you're not paying taxes on what you're getting paid through the stipend. Um, you're getting health insurance through us. So all of the essentials, you know, your Wi-Fi, your electric, your transportation to your school, that's all being covered by Talma. And then you have a $15,000 stipend, 
$1,000 of which has to go towards kind of like a down payment to be a participant in the program. And then the rest of the $14,000 is for you. Um, our hope is that, you know, obviously you can put some of that money aside and, and have it for savings for when you come back. But it's also a chance for you to feel like you have some spending money to live while you're in mid space to really go out and experience things and take advantage of, you know, eating out, traveling within Israel, uh, trying, you know, different classes or programs or gym membership, whatever that might look like for you, but so that you really feel like you have the, the means to thrive instead of just, you know, having the free accommodation and going between work and coming home. So any questions, you are very happy <laughs> money. Um, person there, but like any questions about any of sort of the logistical stuff that we've covered so far? Don't be shy. Okay. Um, so then I guess like the biggest thing for some people is probably just a matter of, you know, whether or not to go and the personal decision that goes along with that. Um, and this idea of whether you're, you know, putting your life forward or putting it on pause. And maybe Judith, um, I'm going to put you on the spot, but maybe you can share a little bit about what that meant for you. And I think, you know, you put a lot on pause at home in many ways, but I would love maybe if you can share about how this has been, you know, still putting your life in motion and moving forward for you. Sure. Um, so prior to joining the full year program, I was a teacher in Philadelphia where I was teaching for six years. Um, and I have a husband at home who is not coming to visit in Israel or anything. So I've left a lot of myself, um, back in the States. Um, but I, I don't in any way, shape or form feel like I'm losing a year of my life. Um, it's quite the opposite. Um, I feel like I, so, so first of all, I should say that my job, um, the school district decided to grant me permission to take a year of leave. So my job is guaranteed for me when I, like I'm allowed to return to my job next year if I choose to go back to the States. Also, not sure about that. Um, but, um, you know, this year so far, I mean, it's only been, I guess it's about half over now. Um, I can't even tell you how much I've grown professionally and personally. Um, I wanted to start to make a transition into international education and international education development. Um, and this was like the perfect first step because I, I know alone, I know Talma, the program having taught with the summer program for three years was um, like a comfortable first step for me. Um, but it has turned out to be so much more than just like the first taste of international teaching. Um, you know, I, I was a music teacher in Philadelphia um, and I have my master's degree in ESL. Um, this is my first real opportunity to, to teach English as a foreign language. Um, and so professionally, I've grown leaps and bounds um, compared to where I was last year. Also, I mean, teaching in an Israeli school is very, very underlined a million times different than teaching in the U.S., um, and you'll get a taste of that this summer, and we'll talk a lot about that during the training for the summer program. But, um, you know, a lot of the things I've learned professionally, I'm, I'm looking forward to eventually maybe potentially taking back home with me um, because it, it's completely transformed my view of education um, and my, my, like my, the view of my role as an educator um, in general. And personally, I mean, I came here with a couple of like personal issues I wanted to work through, a couple of questions that I wanted answered. Um, and I feel like with, it was funny, like within the first two weeks, um, all of the questions to those answers, um, or sorry, the answers to those questions came to me like right away. Um, but now I've developed new questions and things that I am interested in learning about myself and my, my role in the world um, moving forward. And so where I thought for sure this would be a one-year deal, now I'm not so sure. Do I want to stay in Israel? Possibly. Do I want to go somewhere else? Possibly. I don't know. Um, but it's completely changed my life in so many ways. Um, ah. There you go. Thank you, Judith. Yeah. Um, Rach, you want to talk to some of the personal benefits? Yeah, I mean, as far as the personal benefits go, um, like I said in the other the other kind of component, it's definitely all in what you make it. Um, but it is nice in terms of 
expenses, you know, kind of those core expenses that we, you know, have in the U.S., those are taken care of. And so I think this slide, this part actually needs to be changed for lots of savings. Like while while you can choose to save your money, um, that money can also be used to explore, you know, to explore Israel, to explore everything that's around you, um, whether that be even just like buying the local food and, you know, making meals or getting to, um, you know, know some of the things in Meets Bay or um, getting to travel around Israel as well. So while you, you have more money to explore, I guess you could say, than you would in um, the U.S., um, any program will help, any Talma program will help you grow your network, both personally and professionally. I think that that's one of my very favorite things about being a part of this program is, you know, you you go and you do the program and, and you end up leaving with new friends and new opportunities and um, just new ideas, even from, you know, a, a conversation that may not start off as like a professional like conversation, you get like ideas that you may want to use in your classroom or, um, you know, things that you want to start doing. So that's, that's really, I think it's really neat because you never really know who you're going to be connected to and how your network will grow. Um, I mean, it's a given, it's going to build your resume, especially with having those ESL teaching skills um, <laughs> that come with teaching in a different country. Um, and like I said, it's time to explore. And I think that using this time and taking advantage of where you're living um, and exploring all there is to know about Israel, all there is to know about where you're living and just kind of using some of that time as well to look inwards towards yourself. Um, I think Judith was kind of alluding to that a little bit and I know some of the other participants have as well. Just really use this time where maybe some distractions that are normally present in, at, in your life in the U.S., those are gone. And, um, you know, using the time to see who you truly are as a person and where you can grow and then using the year to grow and make some of those changes um, and access to the best hummus in the world is so true um, or access to the best food in the world. I don't know. It's no secret that I love Israeli food um, and eat as much of it as I can when I'm in Israel. It's my, one of my favorite parts about it. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's so many personal benefits and I think, you know, making a slide and pretending that like we've covered them all, I think is hard um, because the personal benefits, like I said, are really going to be up to you. But I think that these five categories are um, kind of a good stepping stone and mirror into what your future in the full year program can look like. Okay, so then stepping into the professional benefits. So some of these we've alluded to throughout the conversation. But one of the things that we do offer for you when you join the full year program is an opportunity to participate in uh, Ulpan or essentially like a immersive Hebrew language class. So uh, we want to set you up for the ability to be able to communicate with your students or your fellow teachers or people in the community um, in Hebrew if you so wish. It doesn't happen overnight and it does take, you know, your desire to want that. Um, it's not mandatory, but we do offer the opportunity for you to have these complimentary Hebrew lessons so that you can really kind of take advantage of this time to grow your um, language skills and also be in the position of student. So maybe you have that humility when you're working with your own kids to understand, you know, what that process is of language acquisition. Um, we mentioned also earlier about Ben Gurion University of the Negev. We have an opportunity for you to take some coursework at our expense, and we also provide at a point during the year a stipend where you can choose a course of your own choosing um, to better yourself and, and improve yourself, whether that is within the realm of education or something that you're hoping to just grow in personally uh, for something that's a goal of, of your own. The other piece is we have a really strong partnership with the Relay Graduate School of Education. Um, they are based in New York, and they have an incredible uh, program within education, and we're lucky to have uh, one of their professors or associate professors who comes out to the program, does workshops with our participants, goes into their classrooms, does observations, and tries to serve as a support um, throughout the program. If you have questions, you need, uh, you know, guidance on how to deal with a certain issue, she is available to our participants as someone who can help grow and guide you. Um, and then the, the other piece is just the fact that, as Rachel mentioned, you're getting this whole experience, a year-long experience of being an ESL professional, gaining, you know, we have an orientation program for you, we have opportunities for you to collaborate with all these other teachers, and just the fact that you're in the field, and you're doing this day in and day out, by the time you return home to your school, 
um, you're able to be an expert, hopefully to your school and your community in what's considered one of the most in demand and high need areas uh, in a country like the US uh, where, you know, there's such a big immigrant population influx and a big need for, for folks with ESL teaching skills. Um, so with that, we'll kind of switch. This is one of our participants who had stayed in Mitz Bay for a summer, but he wrote a, a kind of nice little uh, synopsis of why Mitz Bay. And I won't go into it all in depth, but it's really like this opportunity where, you know, unlike a city where you're just another kind of uh, fish in the pond, um, here you really have an opportunity to make a huge difference. You are in a small community where every little change or every conversation has the potential to be incredibly powerful because it is such a small community. And if you want to get connected to influencers or change makers or be a change maker um, in the community, you really have an opportunity to do so because the, the waves that our teachers like Judith and like Tequila um, and Stacy are making in the community that they're currently serving is being felt really widely. Um, so we love Israel, which you all have been before. Um, for folks who have been with us before, they know that we take care of them. You guys will hopefully have that opportunity to find that out over the summer. Um, and if you love Tama, which we're hoping that you'll also kind of get the chance to really understand that this is a family as much as it is a community, that this is something that maybe you'll be interested in pursuing. So with that, we're looking to have, in terms of a timeline, uh, over the next week, we're gonna open up the full year application. Over the next week, we'll also be making notifications to you all about uh, your status with the summer program, but you can make a fair assumption if you're here and we brought you to this conversation that there's some good news in store for you. Um, and so we're really excited to hopefully explore this opportunity for you, Rachel, myself alone, um, and you know the, the other folks that joined us earlier from the full year program, we wanna be here as resources to you as you start to contemplate this opportunity. And so I'll open it up now for questions. Um, and please, like, it doesn't have to be logistics, it can be experience-wise. You have Judith here who's on the program. Uh, Rachel alone and I are now pretty familiar with Mitzvah, and we would love to, to be able to offer any guidance or insights that might be helpful to you. I actually have to leave you guys. I have an interview um, that's starting in like three minutes. <laughs> so I'm really sorry. I'm going to have to leave. But like, as always, don't hesitate to reach out. You can always reach out, email me, whatever you want to do. If you have any questions. Um, Thank but, you, Rachel. Yeah, sorry about that. Find sorry. For the summer program, if you're interviewing. What'd you say? To find us good people for the summer program. Oh, I will. I, I mean, look at, look at the three that I found. And I think Shane, I think Shane, Shana and I, I think I met you at the, when in the summertime, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I, look, I found them. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it was really nice to see you guys and don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. So let's take some questions. Okay, I have a question. Um, first off, I'm sorry that I have a blanket on. There's no heat in this house. So I'm like freezing to death because it's like 20 degrees outside. Um, so my one question is more of a logistical question um, in terms of leaving things at home. I have a dog and I was talking to my dad about the full year program and he said, well, just ask if you could bring her. Is that like a thing? Like, I'm, either way is fine but I was just like curious would I be able to do that or would I have to like leave her with my mom for a year like what is like the thing with that just logistically speaking so, so you can bring your pet with you at your own expense and you wouldn't be able to cover like uh, the area uh, insurance policy or, or stuff like that we cover you and if you want to bring your dog with you that's fine the buildings allow it Oh, cool. I mean, there's no like building policy against it. So as opposed, I mean, we don't really have that in Israel. Uh, yeah. Building policy, like that. it's not like in America. So <laughs> if you're going to cover the cost, it's fine. And then we would look for someone who would be your, your, your roommate, I mean, your apartment mate um, that is willing to share an apartment with you as long as you have a dog. So we have nothing against it as long as you take care of the dog. And there are uh, probably people dogs. fighting over you, by the way. Yeah, and we all miss a dog so much. Find Israel's a like a dog, like paradise. So <laughs> totally manageable. Other questions, Talia, Shana, Jocelyn. 
I have a question. Um, I'm just, I'm looking, I'm scrolling through the frequently asked questions as well. So if I miss the answer and it's on the website, you can just redirect me. Um, but I'm like, I'm seeing that it is uh, a prerequisite is that you have to be a alum of the Thomas summer program. So in order to do the year long program, do we, are we also committing to doing the summer program as well? Correct. So the way that uh, we're working with this, so last year we, as our first year of the program, we purely were working with folks who were alumni of our program that we knew. Now that we have a little bit more uh, advanced time before we have to jump into the full year program for year two, we're opening it up to folks that are going to be joining us for the summer program. So you'd be starting June 28th uh, is going to be the kickoff of the summer program as opposed to starting August 15th, which would be the start for the year long program for folks or somewhere around then um, who have been with Tama before in past summers that might not be joining this summer. So it's a chance for you to kind of understand the program better before moving into the year long. Um, it's an opportunity for you to kind of get a sense of Israel and have an experience that's not a mitzvah Ramon experience necessarily before moving there for a, a whole year. And it's a chance for you to have like the opportunity between now and the start of the program to get to know us better, ask questions for us to get to know you better, um, and for us to give you the tools and information you need to feel comfortable taking a, a risk and, and joining us for a year um, and really like having a chance to hear from the folks that are doing it now so that you can feel comfortable making that decision. And, and just to add on to what Deborah is saying, it's also an opportunity for us to get to know you. When, so, when someone from Tama comes and says to us, look, we want to do the full year program, they kind of trust us to choose good people that would go through this experience with them. So for us, you know, as opposed to other programs out there that are maybe putting an ad in the newspaper or campaigning over internet to try and get people to join a full year program, we recruit people that we know. We recruit people that we've seen inside a classroom that we've seen as members of a community. And that is kind of part of the, you know, insurance I get, you know, air quote insurance that we get other participants who trust our judgment, who trust our call, and know that if they've been accepted to the program, they're good people, they're good professionals. There's like a lot of potential there. So it's like, it's a two-way street. And I think that as mentioned before, based on the numbers of people that have applied and the numbers that we are able to choose financially from within that pool, you know that you are in good company. And that is very important, especially if you're going for such a challenge. Sorry, this is also just like an initial opportunity for us to share broadly about the program, but just in terms of what the process looks like going forward, one of the things that we do is we want to make sure that we have a better chance to get to know you. So yes, you've had that initial interview for the summer, but um, anyone who goes through our full year program has a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a loan. We have an application that's going to be released uh, Wednesday of this week that I'll send out to each of you uh, to fill out. And it, you know, we've already got your responses from the summer. So it's more just kind of a, what are you hoping to gain from this experience? What are you hoping to bring to a year long experience and a chance for you to express and share any hesitations or doubts that you might have so that when alone does have that conversation with you or one of us has a conversation with you, that we know some of the things to speak to um, and hopefully can either quell your fears or uh, give you guidance around what others have done to, to kind of adjust uh, in spite of those. Hey, if it's okay, I'll, I'll add on a couple of sentences. Just if something, I know that there's a lot of information here, and it's kind of hard to maybe paint what the picture actually looks like. And Judith is one of 15 non-Israeli teachers on the program, so I'm sure that she has extended already the invitation, as well as the others, if you want to talk to people who are teaching in different places and can share like their two cents about the experience of what it is that they're going through. But I think that uh, in order to testify about our maybe uh, strengths, I think that we as an organization are very good in balancing out challenges. And we know in life that sometimes we have problems that we can't solve and the way to, to deal with them is to make sure that we can shed light where it's a bit dark and make sure that people have you know the strength to deal with whatever comes their way. Um, just to, to brag a bit, I think some of the, the pullouts that we've been doing for the group to take them out of Meetspay, kind of recharge them and then send them back to Meetspay have been extraordinary. Just one that we had this week included 
uh, a day in Tel Aviv where they went to a photography exhibition, which was phenomenal, and then a museum, and then dinner, and then the Chris Rock show. Chris Rock performed in Israel this week, so we took all the teachers from Israel there for the day, obviously with organized transportation. And the one before that was in Jerusalem, where we did like a whole afternoon program where there's like this social initiative where you get 600 people to sing together and then there was like a night walk uh, that ended at the western wall and, and dinner before that as well and like we take care of everything there um we we have a policy at the full year program that we've started with the current group that everything that is done for the first time is something that we take care of okay, you're supposed to be independent on the group like cook your own food have your own apartment lead your own life but we also know that if you're coming to a new place for the first time, then we want to make sure that you have things on the right track. So, for instance, uh, the first Friday night in the Mitzvah was one where we invited all the Israeli teachers and the non-Israeli teachers who were on the program to a big Friday night dinner at a hotel. We had our own room and kind of set the tone about what Friday night dinners could look like. For the first two days in the Mitzvah, before moving into their apartments, we gave every apartment a 1,000 shekel stipend to buy stuff, but they were staying at the hotel. So it wasn't just moving right into the apartment before you actually saw, you know, what meets is like and what the apartment was like. For the first holiday, for, for Rosh Hashanah, we invited all the teachers to a magical city called Ashkelon, where I'm from. And um, they were by the beach at a hotel where there were like various uh, Jewish communities there conservative, orthodox, all Israeli, and if, if they were interested in services that could go to them, and if not, they could just, just hang out by the beach and by the pool. And again, this was fully funded. So there is a challenge on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think that our responsibility as an organization is to make sure that you know, we recharge them once in a while to make sure that they can achieve their goals. So we're very much aware of that. And hopefully part of your upcoming summer experience once confirmed with Deborah and Rachel, you know, you'll get to know us that way. But we're good with the summer program that way as well. For every weekend that you have that is programmed, you have a weekend that is free. For every programmed afternoon, you have one that is free. And every time there's a program time slot, it can be something that is uh, oriented towards uh, like professional development, but also towards enrichment and uh, cooking and you know parties and stuff like that. And, and it's all for teachers. Thomas started off as a program for children, for underprivileged children, but it became a, a program for teachers as well, nonetheless. And, and I think that that's something that is very special. It allows us to also see the <laughs> journeys every year, going and growing. And yet we always have about a third of the participants that are returnees that are always looking for the way back in one way or another. So I think that is something that I, as the founder of the program, is something that I'm very proud of. I, th I think that that creates a sense of community. Uh, again, it's not a program for everyone. You have to be determined. You have to be dedicated to a certain set of values. And choosing not to go on this program doesn't say anything about you personally. You can be the best professional ever and a summer program could be enough for you. But this full year program that everyone on this call have, has expressed their interest in is an opportunity for a lifetime adventure. And, and I can tell you that for sure, because hopefully a few years down the road, this is something that you, know, you won't necessarily be able to do because you'll be in a different place in life. Now you are able to do it. And I'll finish with one, one more thing for thought. And that is that you live in a very competitive world and you, if you think about yourself in your framework of right now uh, and applying maybe for a job in the near future, you're going to have to have an edge. You're going to have to have something that you can talk about that you specifically have that the, the other person that has applied for the same job doesn't necessarily have. And this is a really good answer. It's not just about teaching English to this country. It's about challenging yourself as a professional. If for those of you who um, would like, we can send our post-summer report, which also includes different numbers regarding how the non-Israeli teachers felt after the experience, not just what the kids were getting out of it or the Israeli teachers, but how much this program allowed people to feel that they are developing their leadership style and, and inside voice, how much they've been challenged as professionals and will it benefit them when they go back home to their natural surroundings, the school that they were teaching at, or the language that they were teaching <coughs> at. And all the answers are amazing. They're, they're incredible. 
because we're not trying to create another Israel program like the ones that are out there. As mentioned before, it's not a touristy program. It's a communal program. Come and be part of something bigger. Come and need teachers from all over the world, mostly American, by the way, but not only. We have Australian. This year we have some South Africans and some Europeans, and we've got a variety of teachers coming from all over to do something very unique here. So I think that we're doing a really good job creating that framework, and we've done an amazing job choosing the people on the first year program. Now we're looking for the partners that can continue that, that can take it to the next step, that want to come and see from up close, you know, what leading change looks like on a program like this. So those were my two cents. So we can open it up again. If any of you guys have questions, Jocelyn, I, I think you're there as well. So if you want to chime in as well, please feel free to ask away. Oh, you just went on to mute. Jocelyn, did you did you have a question? You're on mute right now. Oh no, I was saying um, I don't have any questions. I'm just taking it all in, I suppose, okay. but I'm still here. Awesome. Shana, Virginia, Talia, any other questions? Okay, awesome. So then in terms of next steps, I will drop an email later this week with the open application to uh, express your interest in the full year. It is not an application to commit you to it. It's an application to open the conversation um, and, and kind of take that next step towards having a conversation uh, with a loan or if you wish to speak with myself or any of the other folks that joined the program earlier from the full year uh, experience. Now if you have questions for them, it's a chance for you to reach out to them as well. But we are thrilled that you took this first step of joining us for this conversation. We're excited uh, to let you know about your status in the summer program in just a few days. And uh, it should be an incredible journey ahead, whether for the summer or for the full year. So really looking forward to or getting for both. Guys better or for both. Exactly. Uh, better yet for both. But um, thank you so much for joining. And again, if you have questions, just drop us thank an email. You, we'll be more than happy to help. Thank you, guys. You have a great rest of your Sunday, everybody. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. So nice to meet you guys.